Good morning. Again, we're in our uh, week of looking at, again, John chapter 21, but the second part of that. Now, something I missed last week, and uh, uh, I think it's, it's significant, is that when the disciples went north, and they were at the Sea of Tiberias, and Peter says, I'm going fishing, it says, we're going with you, and it says they got into the boat. Now, my, my memory was that uh, when Jesus called Peter and Andrew and James and John, it said they left their boat and their father and followed him and the fishing. Where did this boat show up from? Uh, is this a boat that um, Peter got back and said, Dad, can I borrow the boat again? Uh, I mean, he's already eaten enough crow here. Uh, I don't think he probably went to James and John's father because their dad had a nickname called Zebedee, which means son of thunder. Uh, and uh, uh, kind of probably refers to his temper. Uh, and I, I don't think Peter would want to go there because that would be the most distasteful crow. So is this one of Peter's own boats that he just kind of kept there in case this whole thing fell through with Jesus? And there's the boat. Uh, let's use it, fellas. Uh, I don't know. It's just a question. Uh, and, you know, minds like mine ask those questions. Most people don't even think about it. But that came to my mind, and I'm thinking, where did this boat show up from? Uh, I remember when I was a young person and I was getting ready to go into ministry, my father said to me, uh, you need to um, get a degree that will allow you to teach so that if uh, you don't make it in the ministry, you can fall back and become a teacher. Well, uh, I didn't, but I never forgot that, that he said, you know, it, it wasn't exactly a vote of confidence. Uh, for me as a minister, but uh, uh, then again, I, I probably would have been a far worse teacher than I ever would have been a preacher. Uh, I tried that a couple of times, and it, it just did not work for me. Anyway, we're now back at the Sea of Galilee again, and uh, Jesus has invited the disciples to share his breakfast. I don't think the conversation was too lively. I, I think they were pretty well subdued and quiet. There's something interesting about this, uh, this fire. The scripture says it was a charcoal fire. Now, John mentions back earlier in the chapters of John about another charcoal fire. It was a charcoal fire on the night, not too long ago, on the night when Jesus was in the garden praying, and they came and arrested him, took him to the courtyard of the high priest, and there they were trying him, and there were people there gathered around, and Peter was standing next to a charcoal fire, trying to get warm. And different people said to him, you're one of his disciples, aren't you? And he denied it. Denied it once, twice, and three times. And the third time, he denied it with violent language. He was scared, he was upset, he was angry. And there was a charcoal fire. And, of course, there was the rooster that crowed uh, and reminded him of what Jesus had said, that tonight you will deny me three times. Well, they're by a charcoal fire again. And when the breakfast is ended, Jesus says to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? Mm. Well, I'm not sure whether Peter thought too much about it, but he said... You, you, you know, Lord, that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. He's going to ask it again. And three times he's going to ask it. Uh, and, and in those times, Jesus, uh, Peter's going to feel his feelings hurt, as he says it the third time. He was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? And his response is always, you know all things. Jesus, you know that I love you. Now, let's go back to that Last Supper where Jesus said, before this night is over, all of you will forsake me and run away. And Peter says, even if the rest of them do, I will not. I will stand by you all the way. It's a pretty tough bride, Peter, and you ate your words. Uh, you know you did, and that's why the scripture says you wept bitterly because you knew how bad your failure was. 
Now, when Jesus asked the first question, do you love me? It's a little different than the other two, two and three. He says, do you love me more than these? Now, we're not sure what Jesus meant by these. He could have meant, do you love me more than these, that is, the other disciples love me? Because that's what you said a few nights ago. You said you would love me, you would be faithful to me, you would never deny me, even if everybody else did. So is your love really deeper than their love? Or is it just as shallow? And that may be what he was asking. The other side of it is, is maybe it had to do with the boats, fishing net, and the recent success of filling those nets full. Do you love me more than these, these boats, these nets, these fisher uh, uh, implements and success? Or did you hold a boat in reserve just in case it all fell through? And sometimes we can do that, can't we? Just in case we got something in reserve. Um, oh, yes, I'll be a follower of Jesus, I'll follow the way, but then we... Uh, we kind of get cold feet, and, uh, and we fail. And, and Peter had failed. So had the others failed. And Jesus had invited them to a breakfast. A breakfast where they could all be reinstated. Not reinstated. Jesus never let them out of his love. But so they could know they were reinstated. And I think that's what the question, Peter answered it right. When Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, you know that I love you. Yeah, I think Jesus knew that. But did Peter know it? Did Peter realize what it would mean to him and to others to really love Jesus? And Jesus goes on to say, this is what it means. You'll feed my sheep. You'll feed my lambs. You'll feed the weak ones. Not just the, the blue ribbon sheep, but the ones that have the blemish. The ones that, that um, have uh, less than perfect. The ones that don't seem to measure up. You're going to love them too. You're going to feed them. You're going to nourish them. And, and on that third time, Peter responds when Jesus says, Do you love me? And, and Peter responds just slightly different. He said, You know all things. You know that I love you. What did Peter mean by all things? Well, I think he meant that you know everything about me. You do know everything about me. You know when I'm strong. You know when I'm weak. You know when I'm truthful. You know when I'm not. You, you know all about me. You know when I love people. And you know when I don't love people. And you see, that test was going to come later when Cornelius was going to come and ask Peter to come to his house. And you read about that in the book of Acts chapter 10. And tell them about Jesus. Now, Jesus had among his disciples a zealot. There may be more than one zealot. Those were people who hated Romans as nobody else could hate a Roman. Um, Peter was probably like that. And, and Peter was sure he was a good Jew. Good Jews don't go to Romans' houses. Just don't. And Roman centurions, soldiers, <clears throat> not at all. You would not go there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, yeah, you know all things. You know what my shortcomings are, Jesus. But you know I want to love you. I read a talk a long time ago about a, a man who uh, uh, was, was a sinner. And uh, he was asked by the preacher, uh, do you repent of your sins? And the man said, no, I don't. Um, do you feel sorry for your sins? No, no, I don't. Do you want to feel sorry for your sins? No, 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 I don't. Do you wish that you could want to feel sorry for your sins? Yes. The answer was, he wished that he could be a different person, but he didn't really want to be a different person. Augustine had the same prayer. Augustine, <coughs> excuse 
excuse me, was a, 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 a libertine who lived in about the year 300. We call him St. Augustine or St. Augustine. Um, but he was a wild living man in his younger days. And he would pray because he had a, a very saintly mother. He'd pray, Lord, make me holy. But not yet. I don't want to give up what I've got. I want to keep it for a while longer. And uh, finally he had to, uh, he had to let go of it. And, and realize God wanted to work now. God works in the present. The past is the past. The future is not yet. But right now God works by his spirit and, and accomplishes the things that he wants to do. Well, Peter was given a test. And I'm going to conclude with this. Um, afterwards, um, you know, after Peter said, uh, hey, I'll follow you. And then Peter, Jesus says to Peter, you know, Peter, someday somebody's going to come and they're going to take you they're going to bind up your hands, and they're going to bind up your waist, and they're going to take you where you don't want to go. And your hands are going to be stretched out. And Peter, Peter kind of shook. He knew what that meant. He'd seen too many times, including Jesus' own crucifixion, but he'd seen many other crucifixions as well. That was a common practice, especially outside of Jerusalem, uh, as a way of keeping the word going that you better follow the rules that Rome sets. And, and I think it shook Peter. Because I, I think he was feeling pretty good again about things until Jesus said that. And then he says, but what about him? And he points over to John. And Jesus says, you don't worry about John. If I want him to live until I come back, that's not your problem. Your problem is to follow me. And, and, uh, and, and Peter had to wrestle again. With it, and we all have to wrestle with it. How deep is our loyalty to Jesus? Now, interesting that in all of this, uh, Paul mentions that there are many other people to whom Jesus appeared, but this is especially that uh, gripping time in which Jesus said to Peter, "I'm not giving up on you. I'm going to hang on to you, even though you may fail me again. I will not." fail you. And he won't fail us either, even though we may fail him. Yeah, as John says, even if we deny him, he will not deny himself. He is a God of grace and love and forgiveness. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your grace to us again this day and for what you have to teach us about that grace and also for what you dream for us to be, though sometimes we fall short. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, see you next week. We'll talk about Acts.